Namaste. Bro, what the fuck is that? Today we'd be checking out of our hotel in Namcha Bazaar. Oh, my comb. I forgot about that. Thank you very much. Compliments to the chef. Okay. The food here was great. And heading on a six hour trek deeper into the Kumbu Valley. Whole squad's here. Ready to disembark? The next stop today is Debuche. Um, very flat walk today. And we drop down the valley. We'll have our dinner, our lunch. After that lunch point, it's a huge climb up to a monastery. And then we will get to our hotel for the end of the day. Total time, five to six hours, slow. Have a good day, everybody. Cool. It was sure to be a tough hike, but I was adapted to the altitude well and couldn't have felt more prepared to tackle the day. Adidas track pants. <laughs> it's not a track suit, it's a trek suit, okay? Maybe I could become the first human to make it to base camp in Adidas track pants. I'm gonna put on my buff so I don't get horribly sunburnt like I did yesterday. You already are. Getting that haircut before this trip was a horrible idea. Now my scalp is just exposed to the sun. Already my side scalps are just burnt to a crisp. I'm gonna be wearing a burqa for the rest of this trip. First part of the trek was mostly flat with phenomenal views in all directions. Dude, this trail is perfect. We even got our first peak at Everest. You can see Everest in the background there. Yeah. There it is, our first glimpse of Big F. I assumed Mount Everest would be the most spectacular thing I'd see all day, until I noticed a t-shirt one of the Sherpas was wearing. I like long walks on the beach after anal. Beautiful. Can I have a photo review? As I've always said, this expedition is not about reaching Everest Base Camp. It's about the friends I'm gonna make along the way. After anal. While the trail was still nice and gentle and I could actually hold a conversation without losing my breath, I got to know some more members of our expedition, such as Aldo Kane, who was pretty much the real life Dos Equis most interesting man in the world. I did 10 years in the Royal Marines, so I was a commando sniper for 10 years. After leaving the military, he racked up an insane amount of accomplishments. And I've been basically on expeditions and adventures like this one for the last 20 years. Such as taking a canoe across the largest delta in Africa. We were crossing lagoons uh, with 20, 30 hippo in there. Yeah. And they're like super close. And they're quite aggressive, you know. Very each. aggressive. The polars, they're all uh, on high alert. So between those and the crops, it's quite exciting. Yeah. And rowing a boat across the Atlantic from Portugal to Venezuela. Can you imagine we get in a boat that's the size of this bed? Yeah. And then we row for two hours and then we swap with the other guys. And they row for two hours and then you row for two hours and you do that for 50 days. But about 150 miles off the coast of Cape Verde, we got picked up and capsized in the middle of the night. So do you have a support boat there in case that happens? Completely unsupported. The, the closest person to us um, while we were rowing was Tim Peake. Uh, the astronaut in the International Space Station. Oh, shit. <laughs> the other thing is, you know, we're British, we like a cup of tea. After the first night when we were all settled in, rowing, doing the, doing the rotations, we're like, okay, we'll have a cup of tea. And then we realized that we'd left all the tea and all oh. the coffee and all the juice back on the beach in Portugal. And we had nothing but hot water for two months. Well, I can't say I've rode across the Atlantic, but I can say I swam from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Did you? Across the East River. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. That's, uh... That, how long did that take? About a half hour. Now he works in Adventure TV. I look after film crews like you guys uh, yeah. in sort of extreme remote and hostile places. I can do three months with narco guys down in South America, then I can bounce, I can be in Greenland doing first ascent climbing expeditions and then I'm you know, doing an entertainment show for two or three weeks. Where he's collabed with the likes of James Cameron and Will Smith. I've worked for the last few years on the Welcome to Earth series with Will Smith and yeah. before that it was called um, One Strange Rock. 
But he wouldn't be working on this trip. Climbing Everest had just always been on his personal bucket list. But never been the right time, not had enough resources, um, or it's, it's just not been right. Yeah. And so this is, this, this is the year, probably the one and only time that, that I'll get to do it. Also joining us on the trek was a singer from Mumbai named Ree. What type of music do you sing? I sing uh, Bollywood music, mostly Hindi. Oh, nice. My dream is to be an extra in a Bollywood movie. Yeah, extra? Yeah. Not a hero. I mean, a lead role would be incredible. I just feel like that might not be attainable, but as Nim says, nothing is impossible. That's why I'm here, you see? Yes. <laughs> holding mic to holding checking books. And soon we'll be holding Isaac. And Ri would be going higher than me on this trip as she was planning on summiting Lobuche, which is at an elevation of over 20,000 feet. <laughs> That's no joke. It's gonna be fun, I guess. And then there was Gigi, a professional Baccarat player from Mongolia. Is that a card game? Fresh yeah, it's a card game. game. Okay. And he, can you usually find it at, at almost all casinos? Usually all Asian casinos probably have it. Yeah. But, uh, might be a bit difficult in the US. He told me the most he's won in one sitting is 2.4 million Singaporean dollars. Which is still like 1.7 mil USD? Something like that, yeah. But now he was in the Himalayas looking for a different type of rush. Really had some time, free time on my hands, so I wanted to do something physical. I wanted to push myself a little bit and uh, also have something to look forward to. Well, Gigi, it's nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm excited for the rest of this truck. About to walk over maybe the nicest bridge. I can't think of a nicer bridge I've walked over than this one. Well, let me get across it first. Woo! Nice and bouncy. Oh. The rivers are blue. Blue like my unofficial sponsor, Stella Blue Coffee. And this seemed like the perfect spot for an ad read. Most people wouldn't want to linger on a bridge like this, but I gotta get a, a Stella Blue promo shot. Marketing 101. Stella Blue, hoo, 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 like a mountain stream. Stella Blue, 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 blue. It comes from a bee team. New flavor alert, mountain stream bean. What the fuck am I doing? I'm out here looking like a madman filming the fucking Stella Blue promo. Big Cat better be paying for my copter down to Kathmandu after this hike now. This thing is rickety as fuck. After a quick stop to grab some lunch and sip ginger tea, which supposedly helps with the altitude, it was time for the hike to be cranked up a notch. Okay, now we have maybe an hour hike straight up to a monastery. This is why I put in all those hours on the Stairmaster. This is why I climbed a Burj Khalifa equivalent. I got this. How are you doing? So good, how are you? Besides from hyperventilating <laughs> and trying to hail down every horse I came across. How much for a ride? Huh? How much for 10 minutes? Uh, I pay you 10 minutes? <laughs> well, guess that guy wasn't an Uber. I was doing all right. I'm not gonna lie, the Stairmaster, I think has helped. These are the guys carrying the bag, so I really can't complain about much. And hey, there was plenty of on-trail entertainment to take my mind off not being able to breathe. Wagon train. Oh. 
made it to the monastery. I thought the monastery was going to be like halfway through the hike. No, no, no. Our hotel is 10 minutes away. So that was like close to two hours of just going directly up. But it was worth it. Look at this place. Oh, that is incredible. Just the gigantic ice wall. Oh, geez. I still haven't pooped on this trip. But, yep, sounds like that hike really started working it through my system. Uh, all the tourists watching me film this did not need to know that. What are you vlogging for? I work for Barstool Sports. Have you ever? You work for Barstool? Yeah. That is sick. I used to listen to BFFs all the time. I mean, oh, yeah? Josh, uh... Josh and Dave, I mean both yep, of them. Yeah, yeah. Do you know uh, Big Cat? Yeah, 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 yeah. I loved watching him and Dave commentating the, the boxing <laughs> series that yeah. was going on in 2021. Like that, it's so funny. Bro. They're very good at it. Mind if I get a photo of you, mate? Let's go. Thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna check out the inside of this monastery. They do not allow cameras, but that's okay. The inside of the monastery had a Yeti skull in a box, but they didn't allow cameras, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Afterwards, we took a short walk down to the tea house where we'd be staying that night. Made it to our lodge for the night. Dude, I feel good after that. I just cracked a little end of the day beer. Cheers, man. It all started in the World Cup. That's it, from Qatar yeah. to sitting in the middle of the Himalayas drinking Nepal ice. Then it was time to crush a zillion momos and hit the hay. Morning, about to start another long day of trekking. We're starting to run into our first adversities of the trip. Uh, one being I still have not pooped and it's probably been maybe three days, four days. I mean, I don't feel horrible, um, but yeah, I should probably get those pipes unclogged. Uh, number two, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the IT band. It's some sort of muscle that like runs from your hip to your knee. And I have IT band syndrome um, where you just kind of have a really sharp pain on the outside of your knee. Woke up and couldn't really bend my leg at all but i'm gonna i'm gonna power through that on the bright side nims just arrived at this tea house to rally the troops nims had returned from successfully taking clients to the peak of annapurna which some say is the most dangerous and deadly mountain on earth it took him a few attempts it was brutal up there but uh he wanted to check in on us a very important thing he said is just like don't push it Maybe I pushed it yesterday. I'm gonna go a little slower because if this knee issue gets any worse, I might have to rent a horse. Hey, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna fight through the pain. When you think you're fucked, you're 45% fucked. I think from here, he's gonna helicopter all the way up to Everest Base Camp and that's where we'll be seeing him next. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Thank you. See you later. Today we'd be trekking five hours to the village of Dingbo Che. What day is this? Johnny, what's uh, those freaking sticks, dude? Oh yeah. <laughs> Which is at an elevation of over 4,000 meters. One of the first things Nims did when he arrived was take one look at my poles and say, dude, you gotta invest in equipment. If you're willing to spend money on pints, you should be willing to spend money on actually decent trekking poles that could save your life. But hey, I'll get the job done. And along the way, crossed an even more beautiful bridge than the last one. Hello, hello! Horses can go over these bridges? That's insane. <laughs> Holy shit. Yo, fam! Look at this fucking view. I'm on a suspension bridge in the middle of a beautiful valley. And then look at that mountain up top. It's a little hazy, but God damn. Is that Anna Dalblom? Annapurna? I don't know. I gotta take a pic though. One sec. Stella Blue, 
It's blue like a mountain stream. It's made from a coffee bean. And a cup feels nice when you wake up mean. First wildlife of the trip, mountain goats. Yeah. Beautiful. This isn't a bad view either. Every day gets more scenic than the last. We are walking into the town of Shomare. It is 4,040 meters. So we have passed the 4K mark. Still aren't even at half the elevation of Everest. Two hours till Dingbo Che. The mighty Dingbo. Oh, stepped in poop for the fifth time this trip. We powered through the rest of the trek and pulled into Dingbo Che in the late afternoon. Just arrived in the mighty Dingbo, Dingbo Che. I think we're here for the next two nights just to get acclimatized. Oh damn, look at that peak. This is our hotel. Let's check out the rooms. Not as nice as last night, but this will do. And look at that view. Oh, that's actually an unreal view. You can see the peak. You see, if, if you look to the left. The sun wouldn't be setting for a few hours, which left us time to explore the town. This is the main street of Dingboche. And there's no better way to get to know a new place than on horseback. We're gonna see if anyone will let me hop on a horse. Maybe just down the street, yeah. and back. Maybe old, yeah. Yeah. Slow. Very old. Old, yeah. ah. okay. Slowly, slowly, okay? Yeah, yeah, slow. Okay. All right. We got a horse, he's old. The horse guy just let me use his toilet. He's throwing on the saddle over here. to smoke a hoon up here. It's not every day you get to smoke a horse hoon. This is how you get acclimatized. You ride a horse down the main street back and forth cranking hoons. It's called hoon training. Oh, those are some furry looking yaks over there. Those are woolly yaks. Rajiv said I couldn't rent a horse for any of the actual trek. I'm thinking about renting a horse for the next uh, leg. Not happening in the expert. Not happening in the expert. Because <laughs> that would be cheating. These yeah. are your horses and your mules. There. Okay, yeah. Cheating, right there. But he didn't say I couldn't rent a horse to check out the sights. And there'd be no hiding this from them as I galloped directly by the cafe where they were grabbing coffee. Uh, Bro, what the fuck what is the that? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Ooh, there's a police checkpoint. It's a good thing I haven't been drinking, but I mean, let's be honest, that guy's the one driving. I'm not doing a thing. Look at all these new developments. This place has an ATM, are you kidding me? Man, this is way more of a town than I thought it was gonna be. Dingbuche is, it's up and coming, man. This place has an ATM, a helipad, a bunch of yaks, hotels. Look at this spot. Cinnamon rolls, chocolate donuts, chicken burgers, hotel countryside and multiple grocery stores. What more do you need for a community? An Indian restaurant. Holy shit, they got ethnic cuisine? I know places in the Midwest, they don't even have ethnic cuisine. 
best shop in Dingbuche. Maybe I'll get a little whiskey after this ride to warm me up. Should have wore gloves. It is getting chilly. Yeah, I can't feel my fingers. If I get frostbite because I want to go for a pony ride, the elite exped staff are going to be very disappointed, to say the least. People are harvesting. Namaste. A couple puppers. I, I like the dogs up here. Very attractive dogs. Oh, he does not like the yak. He's not a fan. Oh no, he doesn't like that horse. Hello, hello. One zones. Namaste. Yes. So I got them. Turn the books. Wow, those clouds have really rolled in. I can now no longer see a thing. Look at the visibility here. Oh, it's peaking. Yes. You can see the peak. Look at that. It's above the clouds. It looks like the weather's... <laughs> It looks like the weather's clearing up. Because if you look behind me, the peaks are peaking. Wow. That is majestic. Thank you, sir. And his name? Jungi. Jungi. Yeah. Thank you, Jungi. <sighs> now that's how, that's how you hit the town. <laughs> Bye bye, Junkie. Bye bye. Ooh. Tune in next week where I'll reach new heights and attempt to battle through a blizzard to base camp.